are now listening to you are now listening to the wrong agenda podcast the wrong agenda podcast with just Dell. yo 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 this your boy og lee brought to you by valiant world media group this is the wrong agenda podcast What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to the Wrong Agenda Podcast. I am your host, Just Dale. I got my co-host with me, OG Leak, as always. Yeah, yeah. And today we got a, a phenomenal guest that I'm real excited about, Miss Raquel Miller. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's going on? Let me. I'll just drop some info. She's an entrepreneur. She's Absolutely. a fighter. She's a fighter. And um, we're going to learn a lot more about that today. So how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I woke up this morning. You know, I'm blessed. I can't complain. All right. I hear that. Um, just a little precursor. You know, we did a little bit of research on you, as we should. You know, yes. and um, I have been paying attention. I know you've been doing a, a <laughs> few interviews here and there. So I'm like, how are we going to separate ourselves from everyone else? Because some things our listeners just have to know. We we wouldn't be responsible if we didn't ask. But, yeah. Yes. You know, we don't want you to just go through the same thing. So it's not going to be all about, you know, in the ring things here. We're going to learn. Thank you. Thank you. I do a lot of interviews. I'm, I'm thinking, oh, Lord, I'm going to talk about stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah, talk like, about fighting, but I'm gonna talk about whatever y'all want to talk yeah, about. Like yeah, some of those things, we, different stuff. Yeah, talk we about gotta I got do a boyfriend some boyfriend or something. Something <laughs> different. I don't know. All right, okay. so we're gonna start with the basics. Where are you from? I'm from San Francisco, born and raised. Bay Area I represented. That's okay. me all day. Okay, West Coast. Okay. Yes, all day. <laughs> all right. Do you have any siblings? I do. I have a ton of siblings. I have four brothers and I have two sisters. And oh. yes. Big, so it's big. a ton of us. We've been around the block, you know, we fight, we fight our whole life. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you yep, just took so you just took my next question. Did, I was gonna ask. She definitely just took your next question. <laughs> like, how was that growing up? You was out there or was that <laughs> you know what? To be honest, like there is a lot of we do have a lot of siblings. My mom has four siblings, and then my dad has five. So mm. it's it's separate houses, but you know, together it makes right. up a big family. So we didn't all grow up in the same household, but we all love each other. We're all pretty close. We got even closer as um, mm-hmm. as we got older. But okay. all of that sibling rivalries, fighting. I got some crazy stories about so, <laughs> <fighting>. <laughs> so did y'all grow up in the same area or for the most part? We for the most part we're all from San Francisco. So we all okay. grew up in San Francisco, just in different households. Okay. okay. So, Y'all had one of those names, like, oh, that's one of those Miller kids, like, just leave them alone. <laughs> they going to come after you. you. Know, no, this is real life. Like, what, this is just, is just factual stuff. Um, we are the Millers, but I put us on the map. I put in enough work to where they have to be like, oh, that's Raquel, little brother. That's Raquel, little sister. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like, we got one alone. We got one alone. Like, I put in enough work to where they was good in them streets. Okay, I respect it. So, how did you get into boxing? In them streets, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? To be honest, okay, hold on, guys, I'm coming back. Lord, my phone, it's don't right. kill me. My God, don't call me ringing too much. You, but you listen, back, you I'm back. back. <laughs> I got into boxing because you guys know, lie. I used to fight so much in the streets, right? Like I used to be fighting boys, girls. I used to just fight all the time, right, y'all? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, to be honest, I never was a bully. Let's get that straight. Okay. I never was a bully, but I've always been nice and bubbly and laughy. And like where I'm from, I'm the first person Well, my family is the first family that ever lived in the projects. Right. So y'all can okay. learn a little history that people don't know about pretty people. Yeah. I don't really share it. But anyway, yes, let's, let's, I am let's from, get this. <laughs> I'm from San Francisco. I'm from Hunters Point. I grew up on Harbor Road and it was a really rough area. You can do the research, blah, but really rough area. And we moved in when I was about 10 or something. So, you know, you move into the hood, you're a little cute girl and all of the hood and all their cousins and all of that, they want to fight you. But Mm -hmm. I was always a tomboy and I always was never scared to fight. And so I remember coming home, like, mama, I want to be these girls' friends. They want to fight me. And she's like, well, you know what you're going to have to do, right? (laughs) So, (laughs) So I just realized, like, 
you know, it's either eat or be eaten. And y'all not about to bully me and beat me up. Like, that's yeah. just not going to happen. So I just had to beat a lot of them girls up so they could recognize, like, no, you're going to respect my mind. And so <laughs> then they respect my mind and, you know, it they left it. me alone. And that was kind of how it did. But then anyway, I got older. And luckily for me, I've always been really well versed. I've always been diverse. And I always, I was blessed to have a really good job at a younger age. I worked at a law firm when I was 16. And, you know, I lived in the hood. So I almost have like a night and day type of transparency yeah. in regards to kind of like corporate America and then home. So anyway, I got older and I got tired of people being like, oh, I remember you beat up such and such. I remember, <laughs> uh, this is embarrassing. I don't want to talk about yeah. this. So anyway, I just want to <laughs> challenge myself and I want to see if I could really fight because everybody mm -hmm. can street fight for like 30 seconds. You know, you right. think you're doing something, you choke yep. somebody out, throw them down. That's not boxing. That's not fighting. So I really want to challenge myself. And then I grew up in the area of Mike Tyson and Christy Martin was badass. And she had those pink little boxing trunks on and she was mm -hmm. beating up girls on TV. And I'm like, that's going to be me. So that was <laughs> when I really first fell in love with boxing. And I just knew that that was something I had just had to get it out of my system. So I tried boxing three times before it stuck. One time I just was not disciplined. I wanted to spar. They didn't want to let me spar. So I quit. <laughs> the second time <laughs> I went back to train in the, the coach was really inappropriate and he liked me. He was being really weird and I really wanted to fight him. And he told me women didn't belong. <laughs> For real, y'all. He told me women didn't belong in boxing and that I should be a ring card girl. And he was an older wow. man. I, wow. You know, I should have knocked his old ass out, but I didn't. I left and then I was like, you know what? I'm done. So the last time for me, I was like, you know, Raquel, no matter what happens, stick to it, have one fight and see what happens. And now here I am today. Ah, <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes, 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 so yes. That's my story on how I actually really got into the ring and really started fighting. Well, we, 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 we got another question. We need to know a story about. What's um, up? I got some answers. How, how'd you get your nickname? So I got my nickname because like I told you, I worked in corporate America for years before I finally quit to get into boxing. And so I used to come into the gym and I used to be looking cute with my little work clothes, all this stuff. And they were like, oh, you're pretty. <laughs> and they used to, the, all the dudes in the gym used to be like laughing like it was a joke and like I was playing or something, like I was really just in the gym. Cause a lot of dudes tend to think so much of themselves, like girls is only coming to the gym to see them. No, you <laughs> flash. We come into the gym because we want to fight. And so I would come to the gym and I would have my little work clothes on looking cute and they'd be like, oh, you're pretty. And I'd be like, shut up. Then we'd start smart. <laughs> And I'd be beating them up and punching them in the nose, busting their nose. <laughs> and they'd be like, you're a little beast. And so it used to be a joke in the gym. Like, oh, she's a little pretty little beast. And so it really just started as a joke. And they used to just tease me and play with and me. Then and then it just kind of just stuck. And then it just became like, you know what? I don't have to look like a fighter to be a fighter. You know? I yeah, can be cute. Course. I can be fly. I can do my right. thing. And then as long as I get in the ring and kick ass, that's all that matters. That's all and that so matters. That's what Pretty Beast is all about. You looking good at whatever you do. And so you beasting at it. What job was you was you working at while you were uh, training to get this name? So I was a law clerk. I was a law clerk wait, in San so, Francisco. For real. Wait, That's just hold on. Wait, I got to process this. So did anyone at the law firm know that you would be at the gym beating people up after work? Yeah, you know what? At first, they were like, um, at first, they didn't think I was that serious. But I'm like, no, nah, you guys, I'm really serious. Like, I'm really about to start boxing. So... Then I started making the news. And then I was oh. in the newspaper. Oh. So then they had oh. to respect my mind and realize yeah. like I wasn't joking. Like I'm not yeah. playing. Like I'm I'm really serious and I'm really doing this. And then you know, respect it or check it. Yeah, I love it. I love it. For sure. Yeah. Um what inspires you? What's your inspiration? My inspiration is what is my legacy gonna be when I'm gone? Um, I want my family. I want my siblings to know that we're worth it, that we matter, that we can do anything that we put our mind to, no matter what our background is, no matter where we come from. Um, I want them to know that we matter and that we can do anything. Because a lot of people from where I'm from, you know, so many of my friends have been murdered, um, so much sadness. And I feel like I'm one of those glimmers of hope. Like, I'm not one of those people when I do make it, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, she's from San Francisco. I've never seen her. Nah, mm -hmm. my hood know me. They love <laughs> right. me. They respect me. <laughs> and I didn't live in the corner. Sure. You know, I live, I live right smack in the middle of everything. My mama still lived there, unfortunately. <laughs> so, you know, they're going to know that it's possible. And, and that's what it's going to be. And they're going to know that you can do it 
with your own flavor, with your own style. Don't settle. Don't compromise who you are. Um, and don't allow nobody to put you in their box. For sure. That's sure. right. That's right. Preach it. <laughs> <laughs> What else you got, League? I know you're um, picking over there. I'm going to let you roll. <laughs> what does boxing mean to you? Um, boxing means to in, in what capacity? Why do I fight? Or what does it mean? That's a good question, but it can be interpreted differently. What boxing... Um, I guess why... I guess why, you, why do you fight? Well, I fight because I honestly feel like I was born to be a fighter. And this was a chapter of my life that I had to complete. But I also fight because so many people try to tell us that we shouldn't fight, that you a girl, you shouldn't fight, or that, you know, you're pretty, you don't worry about your face and you stuff like that. And, and I don't want girls especially to feel like they have to be defined by their look. Now, I ain't going to lie. Like, you know, I care about, you know, how I look. I always do what's under my skin and all that nonsense. But <laughs> I also don't, I don't allow that to define who I am. You know, like I can get dirty with the best of them. I can fight you. I can dirt bike ride with you. You know what I'm saying? That we can oh. fly. But the <laughs> boxing for me is like I'm not allowing somebody to tell my story. I like to fight. That's why I fight. And I don't have to, and I don't need nobody's permission. I can do whatever I want to do. So, as you guys can see, I'm a rebel. My mama told me I'm the kid that use all her prayers. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I do whatever I want to do. Whenever are, I, are you one of the oldest out of, out of the, the siblings? No, I'm like no, I'm one of them badass middle kids. Oh, no, okay. I'm one of them. <laughs> middle, middle, <laughs> the middle children kids. are the best. Middle children are the yeah. best. Come on now. <laughs> For real, we are, but we, the, we know we the ones that we don't really got that many baby pictures. You know, like your older sibling got all of the baby pictures. Got all of it, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and the babies I mean, and everything. I didn't say we was so, the favorite, but yeah, I, you know, we so, <laughs> just you're talking to my mama like this. Why I act like this because I don't got no baby pictures. Like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, right. so, so that's what boxing is for me. Okay, we got um, we got a little bit of the history now, so we're gonna go into. The career, we're gonna jump into that. So, yes, uh, I'm just making sure I got this correct. If I got anything correct, you could correct me. But your pro debut was Sarah Flores. That was yes. that was the fight. Mm -hmm. And um, just try to take your mind back. What was that like? Because I know you had a lot of fights before, prior to that. But your first pro, your debut. What was the feeling in that? I, that was one of my favorite fights ever. It's going to go down in my, in the history of just being like my homecoming. Like when you fight and you go, when I was on a national team and on Team USA, you fight all around the world. You don't get to fight at home. And literally, you guys, when I fought at home, my people showed up. I literally mm -hmm. probably had like two, three hundred people in the building screaming for me, <laughs> cheering for me. I came out to Webby. I got my people with me. <laughs> they went crazy. Uh, <laughs> that was literally like one of my favorite memories in boxing for myself. Like that was special. Like shout out to all my people because they was literally in the building with me. And okay. it, that was just like special. I love that moment in my boxing career. Okay. Speaking of the music, how important is your intro music? How important um, is that? It's very important. It usually tells your story on okay. like how you were feeling for that camp and or whatever. My nephew was like right here. You so, guys. Yeah, no, <laughs> so right. not it's all right. Like, <laughs> I, I, yeah. How hard is it to pick a song though? It's really hard. That's like more hard than a damn fight. <laughs> <laughs> you, for real. Like it's like it. I've come, I've come out to, uh, I came out to Webby. I got my people with me. I came out to Ace Hood, Undefeated. Mm -hmm. um, I came out to Beyonce, um, Information. I came out with all of my girls. Uh, and then sometimes I'm in fight, you guys, and I don't know what the hell they play. I'm like, what is this song? You've been saying a song and they just play something. And you be like, whatever. What is this? But anyway, <laughs> those are the more memorable songs that I have. But usually your song is important because what, you, what I'll be doing is I'll be training to the song. And then it's yeah. like, if it evoke those type of emotions in me, i am like, okay, yeah, this is the one. Like, if it makes me feel some kind of way and I'll be kind of like, okay, I'm in my zone, then that's usually. So I came out to Nipsey Hussle, grinding all my life. Shout out to Nipsey Hussle. Right. Um, that rest was really peace. that oh. was really dope. Yep, rest in peace to Nipsey Hussle. So I came out to Nipsey Hussle too. But the song is important. It usually tells the story of that camp or probably how you feeling at the time. Okay. Okay. 
All right, so you get out there, get in the ring, history is made, fight is over, like, <laughs> there it goes. Now what's the feeling like? Like, you got that You sore no. as hell. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so you'd uh, be sore out of your mind, y'all. You'd be happy it's over because boxing is not just a really physical sport. It's a really emotionally taxing sport. You know how... Boxing got to be some real special people because a lot of people never had a fight in their life. Now, when you choose to fight for a living, it's like you literally constantly make your emotions go like, here, 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 all mm-hmm. the time. So it's hard to focus on other things because somebody yeah. literally training to knock you out. You training to knock somebody out. So you'd be mentally relieved for a minute because, you know, you'd be like, yeah, get the light yeah. shit. Uh, <laughs> go on vacation. you be yeah, like, uh, finally, relief. <laughs> yeah, and all your hard work paid off, all of the mental preparation because you a lot, a lot goes into preparing for a fight. So you'd be just really relieved. And Lord knows you can't try to, like, eat too much food at one time. People be thinking, like, you could just, like, eat all of this food, but really you just make your body go into craps if you do it because you've been, like, ate healthy for mm-hmm. so long and you then lost weight and all this and then you think you can just like smash some food nah you be curled up like a baby like what's up, <laughs> <laughs> so, so you just be relieved okay so after the win after the fight what is your victory meal what is your your meal do you still stick to your diet or do you really you- it depends but like you mean like that night I'm just Mark saying, me. in general. Yeah, in general. What do you do? what's the celebration meal like? What is- yeah. <laughs> to be honest, you guys, you'd be extremely exhausted. You'd be super tired, right? Because you fight and all your people there. Then you got to shake a million hands. And thank you, yeah. thank you. I love you guys. Love you, love you, love And do a million interviews. So you'd be tired. And I like cupcakes. So all I just want to do is eat some cupcakes. <laughs> cupcakes. I, don't really want food. I just want some cupcakes. cupcakes. Like, I know that sound like what, but for real, I just want cupcakes. Hey, it is what it is. What kind it of is. cupcakes? What's what's the flavors? What's what's the um, one? I am. Hold on, you guys. Can you hear me still? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. So my favorite cupcakes is, I'm like a cupcake snob. I like <laughs> high end cupcakes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I be want to do like you know the caramel apple and. And, I'm you know, fancy. Banana cream. <laughs> I'm a cupcake snob, you guys. So you know any type of like high end cupcake. I'm gonna eat that. Okay. Okay. Cupcakes after a fight. Never would have thought. Yes. <laughs> Cupcakes after a fight. No, not at all. Um, was there ever a time you got in the ring and mid fight you'd be like, oh, this this person might actually beat me? Hell nah. Now <laughs> I would say this. no, because you know, like people say, like, you'll never get scared. No, I'm not gonna sit up here and not keep it a hundred. What will happen is you'll, because you already be like, no matter what happened, you ready to, if you know, you ready yeah. to die on your shorts, your sword. Mm-hmm. Like, whatever, yeah. you ain't beating me. You ain't put in the work. You ain't dieted like me. You ain't put in the work like me. But some stuff will make you be thinking, why the hell did I pick boxing? <laughs> Y'all, I got head butted one time. Lord knows my forehead big enough. I swear to God, I was like, Lord God, if this girl can punch that hard, I'm in trouble. Shit. <laughs> 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 It really was a head, but but in the amateurs, you don't experience that because you got the headgear. You got the headgear. You yeah, yeah. Like pros, you ain't got no headgear, and to me, that's the worst thing ever. Head, but is is the worst thing ever, and that made me be like, God damn, like Lord, great yeah. hell, come on, your head big enough. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> it's like, how do you train for a headbutt, right? <laughs> yeah, you don't, and you don't really even know how to process it until it happens. But you literally kind of like blank for a minute. And you'd be yeah. thinking like, God damn, was that a punch? But a punch don't feel like a headbutt. Now, mm-hmm. not to say like a punch don't hurt because a punch do hurt. But nothing is like a headbutt. That's the only thing that ever made me be like, <laughs> Yeah, like, like <laughs> I'm wrong. I'm okay. Like, I'm sad. What I'm happened? Cut y'all already know right now. I'll get one of them ugly cuts. Cut. <laughs> Done. Done. <laughs> You'll still be pretty. Um, What is a normal training day for you you said what is a a regular training day for me yeah yeah so in camp is different from when you're out of season so pretty much um the difference is the intensity changes because you want to leave something in the tank to kind of 
really kind of gear up and go on overdrive when you're in camp. But pretty much a regular day for me looks like Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, I usually do um, strength and conditioning in the morning. And that's usually like calisthenics and the tire um, swings and push-ups, pull-ups, stuff like that. I usually do it for about maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half. You rest. And then um, I sometimes I'll do like film study. Um, and then that afternoon, I'll do my boxing training. And my boxing training is probably like two hours, three hours, usually max. And if I'm not in campus, um, strategic training, where we're training for certain punches and, and we're tactically training. And if we're in camp, we're kicking up and it's time to go get it. Okay. Um, all right. And the nice. weekends, I hike, stuff like that. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to get my boxing training on, so you know I had that. <laughs> I see you. I see you. <laughs> um, we had the pleasure of speaking to a few fighters in our time, and uh, something that reoccurs a lot of them say. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm, I can Definitely. hear you. Sorry, yeah. y'all. My phone is always dead. Don't judge me. It's all right. I don't ever answer my phone, y'all. It's always <laughs> ringing, <laughs> and it's always dead. I don't know why. But, anyway, sorry. Go yeah, better okay. Well, yeah, a lot of fighters always say when they go into a fight, they're never 100% because of how they train. Do you feel that way? Do you ever feel like you go into a fight and you're not 100% at your... Yes. <laughs> you Like, you guys, really, boxing is really just a really taxing, trying sport. And the reason being is because sometimes me in camp, you ain't got injured. Right, mm-hmm. but you still gotta mm-hmm. fight through it. So you go into camp and I mean, you go into the fight. You're like, God damn, I broke my finger, but I can't really you can't pull out the fight. Now you gonna be ducking yeah. and scared. So you have a lot of issues where you'll have an injury before a fight, and you just trying to mask it and go in there and just you know, God help me. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you've seen all the work I did. Help me, God. And then sometimes you have an unforeseen thing. Okay, prime example with me. I got a contract to fight you, right? You guys, I got a contract. I like to travel no disclaimer. So I always fight and then try to go on vacation. Right. So I had a fight scheduled for January, say 30th. I scheduled, I bought me a ticket to go to Thailand for my birthday, which is February 15th. Right. They can't, they canceled the fight on January 30th, moved the fight to November. I mean, to February 20, 20th. No, no, 28th or something. Right. I thought to not go to Thailand. I spent like two thousand dollars, whatever money I then spent to go to Thailand, you guys. So I'm like, damn, I, I, I you know, I got to fight. So now I'm on, now I'm in Thailand, but I don't really get to enjoy vacation because you know I'm shadow boxing, I'm running on these little ass streets and these cars is coming by. That ain't even the killer, right? Because I'm still training. I get food poisoning. Oh man. So I get food poisoning in Thailand and then I had to come back and I had to fight. But she still got to fight. So you still got to fight through it. That's still got to fight. But that was crazy, you guys. So I got food poisoning and it was crazy. I was in Thailand and then I had to turn around and then I had to come and I had to fight. So yeah, that was really hard. But I, I want to know what you ate because now I'm scared. <laughs> I was being fat, y'all. So I didn't have no business eating. So this cupcake. is what happened. I got all of these, these, I be going to reading on these little blogs and what to do, what not to do. And it said, don't eat no street food, right? But mm-hmm. I don't eat meat. Um, like, I'm slowly um, moving out of um, eating seafood, too. But, okay. man, y'all, they have this ice cream. <laughs> it looks really good. And I'm like, it's just ice cream. I can eat this ice cream. Negative. Ate some road ice cream, like, in the streets. You know how they like. <laughs> road, I don't know. And then I don't know. I was having a slow moment because in my mind, I was like, well, it's cold. It's gonna like kill the jury. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I was thinking. That, that proves, short did me in some ice cream. That proves oh, you man. are fearless because I don't think I would dare eat street ice cream from another country or this country for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally ate some ice cream, y'all. It was the worst thing ever. Yeah, I live to tell a story, but goddamn, don't go to Thailand eating that street ice cream. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Um, so do you know when your next fight is? No. So they just messaged me and they asked me, was I interested in uh, fighting without an audience? I said, yes. You know, hopefully I get the fight on TV. I haven't got the fight on TV yet. So I think that a lot of people don't know who I am because I haven't had that exposure yet. But I would fight without an audience. Um, ideally, you probably have to go in quarantine for a certain period of time. Your team is the only people that are allowed. And you have to get your temperatures checked. But they asked, and I said yes. And if all goes well, 
I'm going to fight. So I don't have a date, but I'm thinking probably within like the next um, couple months, like a month or two. Okay. So okay. Hopefully. All right. So here's where we get to the portion of the things, you know, I just got to ask. So we're going to keep it short and sweet. So just so our listeners can hear it from you, because I know you done said it everywhere else. I'm going to just say, Mm -hmm. are you ready or are you not ready? Hannah Gabriels. I'm ready. Clarissa Shields. I'm ready. That's all I needed to hear. That's all we needed to know. (laughs) My thing, yes, and I'm thankful that you're not going to go all in detail because we've already been around this block. But the thing is, I feel like in order for women boxing to be great, the best got to fight the best. And that's what's really holding us up right now. I agree. Promoters, you know, TV executives, hope y'all watching what's happening. Yep. How are you going to have us get to the next level? Do like Dana White did. Give us the same platform that you give the men and watch us take off and so on. For sure. I agree yeah. with that. Yeah. Um, is there is there any other person that you want to actually meet in the ring? I want to meet whoever they put in front of me, but I really want to fight Cornejo. She had a lot okay. to say about me. Mm-hmm. Um, and just to make a disclaimer, you guys, like as women fighters, we definitely have our share of battles and, and I'm not the person that really got to hate on nobody and do all of that. Cause that's just not my style. I just go and handle my business when it's time to, but some of the fighters make it personal and that's when you stop respecting them. But yeah. you know, with the Cornejo, I have no personal issues with her, but she was acting as if I was ducking her in. I've been mm-hmm. looking for her ever since. I'm, so I'm she's in that. California. I'm from California. <laughs> I think it's a for a great fight. So, yeah. Well, I'm trying to, uh, touching a little bit on what you were saying there on a lot of professions, you know, your, your work speaks for itself and that's all you have to rely on. But with boxing, you know, it's kind of like, do you feel pressure to be more social or, you know, have to say certain things to help get the the eyes on you? Or do you feel like it's (laughs) cause you know, sometimes there's a lot of great fighters all around everywhere, Mm -hmm. but they don't, some of them don't get a certain recognition. Then you have some fighters who they're out there. More, not, let's they, just say. Massive the art of, <laughs> of talking shit and yeah. it works for them. Yeah. Um, you know what? I think that there is a level of um, pressure on you to, to kind of feel like you have to be, you know, calling people out and, and shit talking and all of that. So I experienced that, but for me personally, and I think that I don't, like I always, anytime you guys ask me, I already told y'all what I feel and how, what I think. But a lot of times I wasn't really calling a lot of the girls out as much as I could have because I was really frustrated with my team, you know, because I'm not a real person that be doing all of this talking and, and I'm not backing it up. Like if I'm talking to you online, then I'll hit up my team. Like, what's up? Contact them, reach, reach out to them. So I was really kind of frustrated with my team for a minute, excuse me, because I felt like they weren't doing their due diligence how it should have been done, you know, because it's mm-hmm. like, why can't we make these fights happen? Um, it wasn't happening. I was really frustrated by it. I was really mad with my management team. Um, but I don't know, y'all. I'm about to just start talking crazy to bras. I'm about to just start, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just about to just start going crazy. I'm about to just start letting them know who real pretty BC is, you know. I'm going to just kind of just take the filter off and shit. So when y'all see me wilding out, just show me some love. Hit a like or something. Share oh, my yeah, shit. For sure. Know. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's going to take to make these fights happen. I don't know. That's what I guess I'm going to have to start doing. I don't know. That's what it seemed like. <laughs> All right. So we can move a little bit off of that. Let's let's give us some more. Uh... I, got, I got a question, though. I, I, I just want to know this. This is one of my questions because I, I was on your Instagram and I seen you was in Egypt and you took a picture just like you know, back in the days with uh, Mike Tyson. And um, how do you feel about Mike, Mike Tyson actually coming back, making a comeback in this, in, at this age? I think Mike Tyson is tripping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, let's hear it. <laughs> let's I hear it. Mike needs to sit his ass down. I think he's good on the mitts. But uh, Mike, you need to chill, boss. Um, or if you go fight, please don't go and fight no new up and coming fighter even though i think that mike tyson is a great um i really like mike tyson i think you know highly of him obviously but no you know what i'm saying or maybe fights holyfield but i don't even know about that you don't want to get hair buddy no more no. <laughs> no biden no i don't want to really see mike tyson fight no more 
you know, maybe slightly maybe as like an exp expedition, you know, expedition type of something. But yeah. no, no, it's a new age. It's a new day. You're a millionaire. You have your health. You have your wit. Uh, we all know who Mike Tyson is, and I really don't want to see you get knocked out or something. It's just going to taint your legacy. Just chill, Tyson. That's yeah. the problem with fighters. You know, I'm yeah. telling y'all, when I hang them up, done, finished, gone. I ain't coming <laughs> back no more, okay? <laughs> y'all ain't got to worry about it. Yeah, I'm done. So, no, don't come back. Chill out, man. So, would you kind of feel the same way for, like, a Layla Ali? Y'all already know. know. That's why they <laughs> for what? Like, no, nah, that don't make no sense. So, like, even the Shields chick. Why are you calling out Layla Ali? Even though, you know, as a female fighter, mm -hmm. I can understand both sides of the coin. The Shields chick felt like Layla was coming for her. And mm -hmm. Layla felt like, you know, I was speaking my piece. There's more women boxers than just you. So right. it's like, I can understand both sides of the coin. But to me, it's like, come on now. It's like, right. Layla, you damned if you do, damned if you don't. And it's yeah. like, Shields, why? You got fighters like me that want to fight you. They've been saying like, what's happening? So why are you mm -hmm. trying to fight somebody that's 13 years retired that's silly and then Layla Lee you're a grown-ass woman you ain't fighting team. what are you doing sit down yep. chill out you know what I'm saying talk your shit and stay classy come on now it's a new age <laughs> it's a new day you have nothing to prove chill out exactly hey I, I love it I love it I love it if she did it if she didn't I I just like the attention honestly that it, it brings to the sport whether she it does, does it or that, not that's a, that's a definitely like attention. a plus yeah. You know, we just kind of like the exposure. And I think that that's the biggest issue with women boxing right now. You have promoters and people who only really want to kind of celebrate and push certain women fighters. Right. And that really keeps us down as a whole. Because yes. you take the look from the Dana White approach where he was like, you know what? These girls can fight. These girls are talented. Let me get them a platform mm -hmm. and see what happens. And then you have the everyday fans able to say, you know, well, I like a Raquel Miller. Oh, I like this person. I like the Hannah Gabriels. I like, now you have different people to choose from. But when you keep sticking one or two fighters down our throat, then it makes it seem like they're the holy grail. And then we're all down here when that's not the case. Right. Yeah. Like, and then a that lot hurts. Of talented girls that hurts here. as a whole. A lot of, oh, I'm sorry to hear you. Tell me again. I said, yeah, and that hurts as a whole because then it, it's harder to build these fights when people don't know how great these yeah, fighters and are. and that's the problem. And that's the difference between MMA and women boxing, where the women in MMA were given the platform. It wasn't about, oh, women MMA fighters. It was like, she's an MMA fighter, he's an MMA fighter. Whoever's popular, who's ever selling tickets, whoever people want to see, that's what we're putting on the car. And if you guys are the most popular, you're going as a main event. So now you have women MMA fighters that there is no women. It's just, they all MMA fighters. They're yep. all popular. They're all talented. They have mm -hmm. badass fights, and they and this you know, this sports keep growing. Then you got women boxing, where you got the shields. You guys are pumping, 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 but it's other girls that are talented that are doing their thing that you we're not getting none of the spotlight that you know whatever. And then it's like, oh, then you guys are making bullshit fights happen. You're monopolizing the game. You're taking up all of these vacant titles, but then you want to have this undefeated gloat status. But the the proof is in the pudding. If your team has the money. To put behind you to monopolize these titles to sew mm -hmm. everything up of course you're gonna be the baddest thing walking i mean come on now yeah. it's like one plus one equal two and i'm yeah. not here to you know what i'm saying shit on nobody but the truth is the truth and the facts are facts hey i hear you i'm a i'm a fan of <laughs> mma i'm a fan of boxing so i've seen it I I know fighters that people are like, who is that? And I'm like, what do you mean? They're great. Like, how do you not know them? And I know fighters that people just say their names all the time. And I'm like, yeah, they're good, but there's so many, you know, so I yeah. understand it. And that's kind of how it works. And, and unfortunately, like you have um, promoters like Al Heyman, where he's really helpful for the black fighters, but he doesn't even support women fighters at all. He doesn't allow us to fight on his platform. So you have stuff like that that's really hurting us. You got top rank and they got one girl that they pushing you know what i'm saying and it's like right. that's it come on now you got to do better you have to do better if you expect us to even excel in any way and it's like i can push myself and i can grow myself until i'm blue in the face but if i don't have a network to fight on and the support yeah. for it, mm -hmm. like how you know then you know what it is what it is so outside of boxing what are some of your favorite things to do travel I like to travel. <laughs> I like to travel. I like to eat cupcakes. I like to read. Um, I love animals. You've been huh? so far. Where's your favorite place you've been so far? Egypt was amazing. Egypt was amazing, especially as Black Americans. You need to go. You need to go. Um, 
Bali was really nice. I really enjoyed going to Bali. And those are my top two favorite places. But Egypt was just special. Just the energy, just seeing the pyramids, just seeing a lot of the history that we're not taught. Um, I'm coming back. I'm coming back, y'all. My phone ringing. I'm coming back. <laughs> but um, just seeing the history, y'all. And it's nothing that's in those books. Like, you need to go and see it. That was really powerful. And then the valley was just, like, dope. It was tropical and it was nice. Um, I really like animals a lot. I love animals, probably more than people. Um, <laughs> yeah. What else? I like reading. I'm reading, like, three books right now. What what type and of books are you into? Fiction, nonfiction, self-help? Um, I'm, I'm like a... IDTV queen. I always want to know about some damn serial killer, y'all. I don't know what's wrong with me. Like, we're basically like, why are you looking at this? Do you want to get yes, away? Yeah, yeah, that's the scary part. We gotta watch you. You gotta get away with it, whatever it is. Yeah, so I don't know. I'm like, yeah, because if you put some, some, you know, some radiator fluid, you like, look at, like, what are you talking about? I don't know. So I like, um, I like history and, and true crime. Right now, I'm reading. The Spook Who Set by the Door, um, My Sister the Serial Killer, and Think and Grow Rich. So I'm all over I know the place, that y'all. one. I know that one. The first two, no I'm idea. Little ratchet, little slut, little cool. Let's see, all the way. <laughs> so that's what I, I like. And I'm, you know, and I really just like to, and just help and inspire like the youth and stuff like that. That's a big thing. I have a nonprofit organization. It's called Ladies and Power. where I was going to next. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> that is and exactly so, where I was going. You know, and I really tell, just yeah, tell that, us a little bit about it, you know. Yes, is, of course. So it's called Ladies in Power. Um, we're on Instagram and Facebook. We have a website as well, um, ladiesinpower.org. And it's pretty much a mentorship program. Um, we're really dealing with like um, mental issues, self-esteem, and then just kind of like um, a program that really gives youth from the ages of um, 10 to 18 a window to talk to somebody, to really get knowledge on things that I felt like was really lacking in my community. Like, I didn't know about how to build my credit. I didn't know about, you know, what is a secure credit card. I didn't really know about how to eat healthy and just different stuff that I think gives you a better overall, you know, experience in life. And so we want to give those young women and men things that we felt like we didn't have. And, um, of course, I incorporated boxing and um, just, like, the health aspect of it. And I do, like, an annual fight like a girl. I do hoops and haircuts. And it's really just about being there. You know, they can see me on, on TV, they can see me online, and but it's one thing to be able to experience what it's like for them talking to you and just, you know, giving you the game and really just, you know, loving on you and, and checking on you. A lot of us are dealing with mental issues and nobody really wants to talk about it. And especially yeah. within the Black community, it's really shunned upon. No, don't go see a psychiatrist. You crazy. No, you crazy if you don't go take care of your mental health. Mm-hmm. It's important. So... You know, I just really want my legacy to be somebody that a person that was always for the people that always wanted to encourage you to try your best, to work hard, to believe in yourself and to realize that the cycles can be broken with you. All right. Yep, that's that's big. That yeah. is a legacy worth leaving. And I'm, I'm, I was really glad. I didn't know that originally. But as I started to research, I seen that and I was like, yeah, that's really good. I'm glad. So I Thank definitely you. wanted you to speak on that. Absolutely. Thank you. Oh, and so by, the... while I have the platform, Go ahead. I Go ahead. also, <laughs> like, so while I have the platform, I also um, started my brand. It's the PD, um, the PV brand. And it's pretty much like athletics um, wear and athleisure clothing. I'm going to relaunch it. I'm doing the next um, photo shoot probably in like a week or so. But it's pretty much just like workout gear. Um, I like to be fly all the time, you know. You know, you got to kick up a little bit too, now. Um, but I got some bomb pieces coming. I'm really excited about it. And the whole um, mindset behind the brand is look good, feel good, do good. You know, be okay. a beast at whatever it is that you believe in. But look good in the process. You know, stay fly, stay looking good. You know, don't conform. Sure. All right. And this is launching sure. on your on a website. Um, yep. So um, the, everything is kind of getting revamped right now. I started okay. it. Um, actually, I started it last year. But what happened is I'm really big on just like the quality. I don't really want to put mm-hmm. my name on something and not be able to stand behind the quality of it. So I had some issues with some of the manufacturers. Like um, I like some of the pieces, but they weren't consistent. So mm-hmm. I had to really find some manufacturers that really understood what I wanted to bring to the table, some of the pieces that I wanted to have. And so now I finally kind of have 
a good gauge on that. Mind you guys, I feel like I'll be on my Jamaican. I got like a million jobs. So, <laughs> you know, I'm, you know, giving out tasks to certain people to help me. And that's becoming better for me. Um, just kind of, you know, letting go of some of the responsibilities so that it can flourish, so I can focus on boxing. But that's something that I'm going to transition into more when I'm out of boxing. Okay. okay, we'll be keeping an eye, and we'll be we'll be promoting. Thank it. you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, what's your thoughts on this pandemic? <laughs> you know, <laughs> give a, give a, give a, give us the uh, give us the easy version. Give us the light version. The easy I, version. I see. Is I'm I see. Ready it. for this nonsense to be over. Um, yes. I'm not. It is. It's a very trying time for a lot of people. Um, Do I think it was kind of like extra out and hyped up? Yes, I do. But I do think Mm -hmm. that it's important to try to stay healthy and stay safe. Um, I think it also gave you time to reflect on what you were doing, you know, focus on your family or just kind of have a little bit more personal time. And hopefully that your income wasn't severely affected by it. Like with boxers, it's like, God damn, you know, no fights. That means, you know, no no checks. No no paper. That could be really trying. It's a very just you know, trying time for people as a whole with, you know, less lack of money, lack of jobs and people sick or some people saying they sick, whatever. Um, just ready for things to kind of go back to normal. Um, I'm glad that the gym is semi back open. This has been very challenging. I've been outside running y'all. I'm tired, boss. <laughs> <laughs> My legs hurt from running on the sidewalk. I'm tired. I'm tired of doing push-ups. I'm tired. But, you know, I'm thankful. I'm here. I'm blessed, you know, so. It's all right. Just go away already. Yeah. yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> go away. I want to fight. Go away. I want life to be semi-normal again. You know, like, go away already. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. So we got through the bulk of everything. And we're coming towards the end. And at the end, we do our little lightning round thing. It's something I'm sure you're familiar with. A lot of people do it. But we do it the best. Cause, okay. Know, I see. Us. I see. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. I'm with my headphones on because I'm in charge, so I can hear a little bit better. Because I told y'all my phone is always dead. Don't judge me; it be like that sometimes. All right, so we're just gonna just y'all can hear me. We're just gonna run off some random random questions, and you just give us your quick answers as quick as possible. Some of them will be really random. Some of them won't. Leek, do you want to start? Um, favorite movie. Long Kiss Goodnight by Gina Davis. That movie, which just bombs me. Oh, and remember the Titans. I mm. love that movie. Okay. It's my movie. Um, <laughs> you got a tattoo on your arm. What does that mean? It says "I'm um, strong life." It means destiny. It's in Japanese. It means destiny and strong life because I feel like it's my destiny to be successful, and on that road, I have to be strong. Okay. Guy Lee, we're gonna go back to back. Oh man. Um. Supposed to be lightning. Let's go. <laughs> I, know, I know, I know, I know, I um, know. Come on, she's a boxer. She's gonna be counter punching. Let's I'm go. ready. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> right. I didn't hear you. It it broke up a little bit. Yeah. Favorite favorite airline. Mm, um, all of them ain't good. So you know. God damn. Um. Southwest be my friend. I'm always late, y'all. They be letting me switch my flights and they be having my back. I'm going with Southwest. Okay. 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 Uh, if you weren't boxing, you would be doing what? I would be an attorney or I would be a veterinarian. Okay. Mm. If that's the case, your favorite animal? You um, like animals? Elephants. I love mm. elephants and I love dogs. But elephants, okay. I really love elephants. They're, they're just amazing. I love them. And they're run by the women and they're just amazing. And people need to stop, you know, killing them because they're going to go extinct. Then I'm going to have you, to whoop some people ass. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did, you, did you get to like ride one or something entirely? Or they have elephants um, I won't ride the elephants because I don't think that an, the elephants are meant to be rode. I did go to a sanctuary and I just really just want to appreciate the animals and their, you know, in their existence. They don't have to do no tricks for me. Um, mm-hmm. So people, please don't go riding them elephants. Like they ain't meant to be rode, you know, <laughs> but just appreciate animals for what they are. So I didn't write them. I went to a sanctuary and I just looked at them. I fed them some um, bamboo sticks and some bananas and they were just amazing creatures. And so I was, I was in Thailand. I had food poisoning, but I still was going to those things. <laughs> 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 I did. So that's, that's why I went to Thailand because I went to see the elephants. So yeah, elephants are my favorite. Okay. okay. 
All right. So, uh, uh, early mornings or late nights? Everything, y'all. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'll be up early in the morning. I'll be up <laughs> late at night. I don't know. I'm always woke. I just want to go to sleep. I'll never turn my brain off. I don't know. But I think, I think late nights if I got to pick. But I can't tell no more, y'all. It's just all over the place. I don't know. But maybe late night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, white wine or red wine? Good question. I like sangria. I like, I like, mm, I sangria. like, well, I like dark. I don't know. I just like wine, y'all. I don't mind y'all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but I guess if I got to pick, I'm going to pick some, some dark wine, but I'm cool with some wine. As long as it ain't no hard liquor, don't, don't try to give me no Hennessy. Uh-uh. Mm. <laughs> as long as it's some wine, I'm cool with that. I can roll with that. As long as it's mine. But dark, I'll take it. Okay. Okay. All right. Here's one that's boxing related. If you had to pick, would you rather do longer rounds or more rounds? Longer mm. rounds. Okay. I think women should be fighting three minute rounds. I, I think the two see minute rounds. <laughs> yeah, like pay us and, and let us fight three minute rounds because we train three minute rounds mm -hmm. mostly all the time. Like we just train, it's just kind of what it is. And I think the two minutes is like really short, but considering that they don't pay us shit, keep the two yep. minutes. <laughs> we go to three minutes. They give me the money. Exactly. So, so, so. Yeah. That's all I got. I don't know. All right. Looks like right now. Yeah, looks like she wins the lightning round for the day. I was. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I just want to thank you guys, you know, for having me on. I appreciate you guys. You know, you're dope. I love what you're doing. Thank you for sharing your platform with me. You know, I appreciate that. And I just want to just kind of touch bases on the the police killings that's going on right now because it's really important yeah. and it's really messing with my mental health. You know, being a black woman, you know, I, I got a daddy, I got brothers, and I got a nephew, and just rough. And I just feel like, you know, I'm sending everybody love and light right now. You know, especially, you know, being black in America is really hard. And yeah. my best friend is a police officer, and I was just talking to her. And we were crying on the phone because she is like, you know, I joined, her name is Tierra Brown. She's an amazing boxer. She's a D.C. police officer. But okay. we were just talking about how she joined the police academy because she wanted to be the difference. She wanted to be the change. And she says, like, she feels that she gets attacked from both ends, trying yeah. to do the right thing. And then people see her, you know, you're a, you know, you're a traitor. And it's just, like, really challenging. But mm -hmm. it's like, no part of that is okay. You know, mm -hmm. no part about being, you know, saying being over-policed is okay just because we're Black or being treated in you know, a different fashion because we're black and it just goes so much deeper than just the police, you know, because we're dealing with racism on so many different playing fields on all a lot the of time. Levels. And, yeah. it, and it becomes like, you know, you've been so accustomed to feeling and being strong that it's like, well, damn, when do we get a chance to not have to be strong just to be normal? You know, <laughs> it's like, and I'm not mad at none of the people that's real protesting. I'm not mad at nothing because I'm fed up, you yeah. know, I, I just signed up to get my gun license, you know, because it's at a point where we got to protect our families. We got to protect right. ourselves. And so right. it's just like a really trying time as a whole, you know, and I got friends of every race, of every nationality, but it doesn't take the fact, change the fact that I'm black. I can't yeah. change, you know what I'm saying, that I'm black. I can't change that I'm a black woman and just a black man. Like, I love you. I support you guys. You know, you guys Appreciate are the counterpart it. to me, especially when, you know, in this time, it's always so much like, Black, black on black with women and men. And it's just like, I'm saying it like, I love you guys. Thank you. I appreciate you. You know, yes. you need it. You're appreciated. And, you know, together, we'll move forward. There we go. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. Yeah. But yeah, but, yeah so, I, I, but I, I just want to touch bases on that because it's been really affecting me. And I don't always talk about it because sometimes it's, you almost feel like you just constantly it's just a traumatic thing that you're constantly experiencing because if it's not, you know, George Floyd is, you know, the, the, the Oscar grants and it's the Tamir, right. It's so many, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and that it, it becomes like really overwhelming where you start to feel like a constant state of being enraged and right. that's frustrating in itself. And so, you know, you need counseling, mm -hmm. get counseling, talk to somebody, 
you know, because it's a really trying time right now on top of all of this uh, yeah. Corona stuff going on. It's a really Definitely. rough time right now. So, it's you know. more important than ever that we got unity and we stick together and we support yes. each other. Support each other is, it's a big thing. Yes, it absolutely. Definitely is. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for letting me, you know, be a part of your, your podcast and just share your platform with me. Thank you. Thank you Thank for coming. You. Thank you. And let me just say for everyone out there listening, she did this like a true champ. Yep. She came. She didn't know any questions we were going to ask. She didn't know anything. <laughs> She's not one of those people. Like some people, they were like, well, what are you going to ask me? Don't ask me about this. Don't say that. She came ready for whatever. And for whatever. <laughs> and she she did yes. she did, handled everything great and yeah I love it I love your message like you said there's Thank a you. lot of things going on and it's hard sometimes you know you don't know how to balance you you you're enraged you're numb either way it's it's not good to be either way too much but at the same time people out there just don't ignore it don't become blind to it because yes. that's not going to help anyone so yes. yeah, keep Absolutely. it in the forefront of your mind it's reality. It's happening. That's, you know, that's the main Absolutely. Thing. Yep. Yep. So, and then I also tell everybody, you know, please follow me and check me out. You can find me on Instagram <laughs> under, oh yeah, I'll be ready, y'all. <laughs> I'm ready, ready. <laughs> oh no, we was going to go <laughs> to the pods. We's definitely gonna go. yeah, we we were, we was definitely going to go. Shout out everything. We want to know everything. But Shout out everything yes, and everyone. Yes. Right, go ahead. Go so, ahead. You got you know, it. I just want to just take the floor to say thank you guys, but you guys can follow me. My name is Raquel Miller. I'm on Instagram under um, Miss period Raquel Miller, MS period Raquel Miller. I'm on Facebook under Raquel Miller. I'm on Twitter under Miss Pretty Beast. Um, I have the line dropping. That's PB Athletics. And I also have the nonprofit organization that's um, Ladies in Power. So it's all on my social media handles. I try to update it as much as possible and keep you guys informed. But, you know, stay doing your thing. Stay encouraged and be a beast at anything that you do. All right. And shout out to Definitely you and your management that. team, too. I appreciate you. you guys and, and handling everything and getting this all together. So Thank you. Shout thank out to my sister. She's my team manager. <laughs> She helps okay. me off because yes. I'd be like, Who I gotta interview with? What am I supposed to be doing? Like, yes. <laughs> from home, she'd be like, Did you do it? Like, yeah, got it. So, thank you. Yeah. A shout so out to guys. her. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you. I appreciate y'all. So, you know, let me know. Send me a link so I can shout you guys out and, you know, share the podcast and just keep that support sure. going. And, and we'll be yeah. here. And thank you. whenever you want to come back, hopefully, it's 10 Coming and back. We'll, yes. we'll see you on the, on the next go be around and, and the next and go around and going. the next go around and <laughs> we'll see you again. And when you up there with all the belts and you, you had 25 and 0, we'll, we'll be out there. We'll be watching. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yep, and I appreciate y'all. Thank you guys so much. No. All yes. right. Thank you. All right. Let's be in touch. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. It's been the Wrong Agenda Podcast. Um, just continue to follow, like, subscribe, you know, uh, get the merch, topprioryclothing.com, get your shirts, we got some new colors out, and um, keep sending us questions, or if you got anybody you want us to talk to, you know, we're here, and um, be safe, and thank you. We're out of here.